Welcome to this documentary where you will discover the secrets of the history and the foundations of the legendary Blaugrana club, Barca. In the colors of a region, Barcelona is a political club that is unique in the world. Let's start with its creation. The story beginning on October 22, 1899, Joan Gamper placed an ad in the Los Deportes newspaper declaring his wish to form a football club, a positive response resulted in a meeting at Gymnasio Sole on November 29. Eleven players were present, Walter Wilde the first president of the club, Luis Dorso, Bartomeu Terradas who will be the second president, Otto Kunzel, Otto Mayer, Enrich Ducal, Perry Cabot, Josep Labet, John Parsons and William Parsons. As a result, Football Club Barcelona was born. At first half of the shirt was blue and the other half burgundy, the sleeves were in opposite colors and the shorts were white. The most likely theory concerning the origin of the color is that it comes from the kit worn by the rugby team of the English school Merchant Taylors School where the Witty brothers, two of the first members of the club, had studied in their youth. The first matches were to play at the old Bonanova cycle path and then at the Casanovas Hotel Park. In 1901, Barca will play at Carretera Dota. FC Barcelona quickly became one of the main clubs in Spain, participating in the Copa del Rey and Campeonato de Cataluña which the club won six times. In 1902, Paul Haas would become the third president and the first not to have been involved in the founding of the club, and also the first to never have played for the team. This year the club won its first trophy, the Copa Macaya with three goals from legend Joan Gamper. The club also played in the first Copa del Rey final in 1902, losing 2-1 to Bisaya. This year the club also won the Copa Barcelona. The following year the legend Carles Comamala the prolific striker will be recruited by its new president Arthur Witte member of an important English family residing in Barcelona at the time, replaced in 1905 by Josep Sola who was president of a club in decline for only one year, this year the club will play these matches at the Terrain Cara de Montana. A year later, Julie Mariel took over the head of the club in 1906 for two years and who guided the club through difficult times both socially and sporting. In 1908, Vicence Rijg would be president just 22 days before Joan Gamper's takeover, who first became club president in order to save the club from bankruptcy. The club had not won since the Campeonato de Cataluña in 1905, it had caused them financial problems. With these achievements Joan Gamper has helped Barcelona to acquire its own stadium and thus to obtain a stable income. On March 14, 1909, the team moved to Camp de la Industria, a stadium with a capacity of 8,000 people under the orders of Otto Melin who would chair the club a year before Joan Gamper's return in 1910. The supporters of Barca associate this football field with the origin of the nickname of Colors, literally, ass people, used to designate the supporters of FC Barcelona. Far from being offensive, the name refers to the supporters sitting in the top row of the stadium. From the outside, people passing by could only see their buttocks. To celebrate their new surroundings, a logo contest was held the following year. Carls Komamala won the competition and his suggestion became the crest the club still wears to this day, with some minor changes. In 1910 Barca won their first Copa del Rey against Espanyol. With the new stadium, Barcelona took part in the inaugural version of the Pyrenees Cup, which at the time consisted of the best teams from Languedoc, Midi, Aquitaine in the south of France, Basque Country and Catalonia, all were former members of the Marca Hispanica region. The tournament was generally considered the most prestigious of that time, Barca won two trophies in 1910 and 1911. Barcelona continued their international ascent at the start of the new decade by winning two more Pyrenees Cups and two other Copa del Rey, while changing the first manager including Billy Lamb who was the first foreigner to receive a salary from the club followed by the English Baron and Jack Alderson who impressed President Gamper so much that he signed him as a player coach. Striker Paulino Alcantara, the club's first big star, played an integral part in the club's triumphs, coached by Englishman Jack Greenwell. The latter became the club's first major full-time coach in 1913. The last edition of the cup was held in 1914 in the city of Barcelona, which local rivals Espanyol won, despite a great match from Ramon Torralba Larras, known as the Old One, due to his long career with Barca. During the same period, the club changed its official language from Castilian to Catalan and gradually evolved into an important symbol of Catalan identity. For many fans, being part of the club had less to do with the game itself and more with being part of the club's collective identity. 
In 1916, Barca recruited two future legends, Agusti Sancho extremely powerful midfielder and Argentinian Emili Sahi Barber considered as the best left winger in Barca history. Joan Gamper stepped down as president because of problems with the federations. The following who will all replace after a year or even a few months at the head of the club including, Francesc de Moxo who reunited the club and the league, Alvar Presta who will resign three months later, Joaquim Pires de Vargas who also resigned due to the situation at the club which had become unbearable, Rafael Lopart who marked the period of peace and consensus within the club and the new board of directors and Gaspar Roses who will resign because of a big mistake in recruiting a Philippines player not declared which made them lose the championship in 1916 which will be replaced by the return of the creator Joan Gamper in 1917. On February 4, 1917, the club held their first testimonial match to honor Ramon Torralba who played from 1913 to 1928. The match was against local Teresa, who Barcelona won 6-2. In 1919, it is the legend Ricardo Zamora recruited by Gampa who will play for Barca three years before going to the local enemy. Joan Gampa will be replaced again after having settled so many problems which played the club by Ricard Grails which will be a great success. The following year Gaspar Roses was elected president of the club which recruited Josep Samitier and Vicente Pierre in 1920. Gamper had also launched a campaign to recruit more members of the club, which in 1922 had more than 20,000, who helped to finance a new stadium. During this time the club won five Catalan League Championship and the fourth Copa del Rey in 1920. Stade des Courts, inaugurated on May 20, 1922 by Gampa, who returned to the club to be president, was the scene of the club's first expansion and golden age. It was one of the best football fields in Europe at the time. It was designed by Santiago Mestres and Josep Ailmany and cost a total of almost 1 million pesetas. It had an initial capacity of 22,000 spectators and successive expansions have tripled that capacity to 60,000. The court's football fields have seen three decades of hope and glory, but have also seen less successful periods. That same year Barca won another Copa del Rey by beating their Basque rival Athletic Bilbao. The following year it is the goalkeeper Ferenc Platko who will arrive at the club which will be the subject of a poem to salute these heroic performances after the victory in the cup in 1928. At the same time a new coach will be appointed at the head of the club. Hungarian Jezza Pozzoni for only two months, replaced by his mentor William Alfred Spouncer then by Ralph Kirby who was not able to bring the team together and finally replaced by Jack Dombey who managed the formation of promising young stars in 1926. In 1924, Enrich Cardona was president for one year before giving way to Joan Gamper for his last comeback. With Gamper, the club's fortunes began to improve on the pitch and experience their first golden age. This year is also marked by the creation of the basketball section of Barca on August 24, 1926. The club participated in its first competition in 1927, playing in the Championship of Catalonia. During these early years, basketball in Catalonia was dominated by other clubs such as CE Europa, Laeta BC, CB Athletic Gracia and Societe Patri. The club operates at the Sol de Bay Sports Complex. On June 14, 1925, in a spontaneous backlash against Primo de Rivera's dictatorship, the crowd in the stadium mocked the Royal March. In retaliation, the pitch was closed for six months and Gampa was forced to relinquish the club presidency forever, replaced by Joan Coma for the administrative management of the club, the latter being closed for six months. This coincided with the transition to professional football and, in 1926, Barcelona managers including Arcadi Balaguer, friends of the king and new president to reorganize the internal structure of the club publicly demanded, for the first time, the operation of a professional football club. On September 21, 1924, Barca played their first in their rugby match section, a friendly match against CADCI in San Baudilio de Lobregat. This inaugural match was attended by then president and founder of the club, Joan Gamper, who was accompanied by many executives. Barcelona won the game 9-5. Francisco Baltazar Albanese was appointed delegate of the rugby club by Gampa, who was a great admirer of rugby and who saw Baltazar as a real man of FC Barcelona, and a true pioneer of the sport in Spain. During the first seasons Barcelona rose through the ranks of Spanish rugby and, under the guidance of their coach Corominas, formed a formidable 15, Blasco, Aximeno, Folch, Fust, Carreras, Aguilar, Bori, Estepe, Fontanella, Pujalta, Rufus, Izar, Ruiz, Ruz, Rossini, Bides and Mikel. They won the club's first championships in Catalonia and Spain, concurrently the 1926 and 1930 Copa del Rey, the latter beating Real Madrid's rugby section 39-3. 
Between 1925 and 1928, the club won three new Copa del Rey, notably with goals from one of the club's top scorers Ancla Rocha. In this decade Barca continued its supremacy in the region by winning eight Catalan League Championship. On July 3, 1927, the club coached by Roma Fawns held a second testimonial match for Paulino Alcantara against the Spanish national team. To kick off the match, journalist and local pilot Josep Canudas dropped the ball onto the pitch from his plane. In 1929, Barca won the first Liga in history in Spain with Tomás Rosés as the new president ahead of their historic rival Real Madrid. A year after the victory, on July 30, 1930, Gampa committed suicide after a period of depression brought on by personal and financial problems. After Tomás Rosés, Gaspar Rosés will be at the head of the Catalan club in the middle of a period of constant disputes between the directors. James Bellamy will be appointed manager of the team, with whom Barca suffered one of the most deplorable events and their biggest defeat in their history, losing 12-1 in La Liga to Bilbao. In 1931, Anthony Oliver became president for less than two months after a stormy meeting during which Gaspar Rosés resigned. Before passing the torch to Joan Comer for his second term who will preside until 1934 before his retirement. The Societar Esportiva Industrial España, founded on August 1, 1934, the original club of the factory of the same name, will in the future be the reserve team of FC Barcelona, its jersey sporting blue and white vertical stripes. Although they continued to have players of standing like Josep Escola known as the Professor, or Martí Vantora considered to be one of the best wingers in Barca history, the club have now entered a period of decline, in which the political conflict eclipsed the sport in all the company in spite of the return of the great trainer Jack Greenwell on the bench for a short stint until 1933. He will be replaced briefly by several other trainer including, Jack Dombey who was catastrophic then Franz Platko chosen by the new president Esteve Sala who has to solve the critical situation that the club is going through. The following season in 1935 it was Josep Sunnell who became president to continue the management work, he hired the charismatic Irish Patrick O'Connell on the bench. Attendance at the matches fell as the citizens of Barcelona were busy discussing political issues. Although the team won the Campeonat de Catalunya four times in this decade, success at national level was poor for this time, FC Barcelona became the champion of the Mediterranean League in 1937 and champion of the Catalan League in the next season. A month after the start of the Spanish Civil War in 1936, several Barcelona players joined the ranks of those who fought the military uprising, alongside players from Athletic Bilbao. On August 6, Falangist soldiers near Guadarrama assassinated club president Josep Sunol, a representative of the pro-independence political party. He has been nicknamed the Martyr of Barcelona and his murder was a defining moment in the history of FC Barcelona and the Catalan identity. In one of the most difficult times ever experienced by Catalonia and Spain, the club was without a president and in the midst of a revolution. After Josep Sunnell's assassination, an employee committee was formed to run the club and ensure that no one could take it over during the civil war. To escape a country at war and at the same time generate essential income for the club, Barca undertook a tour of the Americas in 1937, notably in Mexico and the United States. Some players would not return to Barcelona, seeking asylum in Mexico and France. The club also found a president, with regard to Francesc Xavier Castles who unfortunately will only remain in office two years before his imprisonment by the Franco regime for his pro-Republican and pro-Catalan history. For the club's rugby section, more successes followed in 1931-32, when both Barcelona teams won the Catalan League, as well as the Catalan Cup, which was held for the first time as well as a new Copa. Del Rey during this decade. The club experienced problems in 1933-34, when the stress of not being able to train properly and not having a field for two years. In 1935, the club rented land on Avenida Diagonal, which meant that regular training was possible and a high level of play was achieved. After the Civil War, FC Barcelona undergoes a reorganization, and it was not until 1940 that friendly matches were played, in various stadiums of Montjuic, Diagonal and San Baudilio. The club's board of directors gave great support to the rugby club, leading to the creation of the Catalan Rugby Federation in early 1941. On March 16, 1938, Barcelona suffered aerial bombardments from the Italian Air Force, causing more than 3,000 deaths, one of the bombs having hit the club's offices. A few months later, the club, now down to only around 3,500 members and facing a number of restrictions. All signs of regional nationalism, including the language, flag and other signs of separatism have been banned throughout Spain. The Catalan flag has been banned and the club are not allowed to use non-Spanish names. 
These measures forced the club to change its name to Club de Football Barcelona and to remove the Catalan flag from its crest. After the civil war, the Franco regime ordered the creation of another management committee. It is therefore Joan Sola who takes charge of the management of FC Barcelona, replaced a year later by the aristocrat Enrique Pinero. Between 1939 and 1940 several legends will make their entry into the club including one of the best full-backs Francesc Calvet, the winger with his incredible speed Mariano Martín, César Rodríguez famous for his powerful headers, Josep Val who has spent his entire career at the FC Barcelona and midfielder Gonzalvo III. For basketball it was not until the 1940s that the club became a basketball team. During that decade they won six Copas del Generalissimo and were finalists once. The club also changed stadium playing at Les Courts Court. The most difficult times experienced by the football club FC Barcelona were the first years after the war. The club has reached a point where it has almost ceased to exist. Subject to relentless repression and reprisals by the authorities, the identity of the organization has been completely changed. The purges also affected players, who had toured Mexico and the United States and were suspended for two years. Many players have been exiled abroad. The coat of arms and the name of the club were changed because they were not considered sufficiently Spanish, and the presidents of the club were scrupulously selected by the sports authorities until 1946. From 1941, Ramon Guzman will train the team for only one half season he will be fired for poor results replaced by Joan Josep Nogues with whom Barca won the Copa del Rey in 1942. That same year Josep Vidal Ribas will become president for only 33 days marked by the return of Enrique Pinero who created the handball and roller hockey sections. This decade will be wonderful for the sections of the club, handball for its creation where successes are very quickly to arrive in this period by winning five championship of Spain and six championship of Catalonia. For basketball, the team began to impose its power in the country by winning six Copa ACB and eight Catalan championship. And even for the rugby section which won five Copa del Rey, where Barcelona captain Sardor received the cup from General José Moscardo Ituate, head of the national sports delegation at the time. In 1943, Club Deportivo España officially became the Barcelona reserve team and started playing at home at Camp de les Corts. This year, the Spanish government appoints Josep Vendrell as president of the club, Josep Seguer will arrive at the club and he will make his entire career there followed the following year by the arrival on the bench of Josep Samitier which will begin an important period of the club. The year will also be marked by the clash against Real Madrid in the semi-finals of the Copa del Generalissimo. The first game at Les Courts was won by Barcelona 3-0. Ahead of the second leg, Franco's director of state security visited the Barcelona players in the locker room. He reminded them that they only play thanks to the generosity of the regime. Real Madrid comfortably won the game, beating Barcelona 11-1. The formation of the team in the following years led to more promising title wins. For many people, Barca's games at Les Courts have represented an oasis of freedom during years of fear, misery and repression. Barca won the Liga 1945 then with Estanislao Bassero as coach and Agustí Montal as president who brought the club back to success by winning the Liga of 1948 and 1949. In 1949 Barca also won its first European title, the Latin Cup precursor of the European Cup by beating Sporting Portugal. At the end of the decade the club won the Copa del Rey and the Eva Duarte Cup. These successes are linked to the legends who play for the Catalan club, Estanislao Bassera one of the best wingers, the great goalkeeper Antony Ramalitz, the great central defender Gustav Biasca, Sigfrid Gracia from the youth system and Joan Segarra the great captain. In 1950 the team will quickly be led by Ramon Lorenz who will give way to Ferdinand Dauchik, the brother-in-law of the future legend of the Kubala club. Also in this period, the 50th anniversary of the club coincided with a period of great success and great growth, Barca had a total of 24,893 members. The club's founding was commemorated with a series of events and a three-way football tournament, between Barca, Bold Club from Denmark and Palmeiras from Brazil. Barca won the tournament. Taking full advantage of this anniversary celebration and thanks to an initiative from member Salvador Grau Mora, the club restored the four stripes of the Catalan flag that it had been forced to remove from its coat of arms. It was a clear demonstration of his desire to regain his identity, despite the limitations imposed by existing circumstances. The massive participation of Barca supporters in the celebratory events that took place at Les Courts made it clear that the club had outgrown the legendary stadium. This period began with the arrival of the Hungarian legend, Ladislaw Kubala where his phenomenal physique, his technical ability, his extraordinary vision of the game and the fact that he was a free-kick maestro and a leader in the field. 
He holds the all-time record for most goals scored by a Barca player in a league game, with seven goals scored for Barca against Sporting de Gijon on February 10, 1952. On his arrival, the club won the second Latin Cup in history against Nice. The club will also prevail in La Liga, winning the 1952 and 1953 editions. Both the Eva Duart Cup and the two Copa del Rey of the same year have been won. Enrich Marti Carreto was the chairman in the 1952 season, but resigned over the Di Stefano affair after reaching a deal with River Plate, the club that held the players' rights. At the same time, Real Madrid conducted negotiations with Milanarios, the team for which Di Stefano was playing at the time. A strange federative maneuver supported by the Francoists stipulated that Di Stefano had to play alternate seasons with each club. Barca went against the verdict and abandoned the player. It is therefore Francesc Mirosons who will be elected at the head of the club. Regarding the sections of the club, rugby to win two Division of Honor and four Copa del Rey in the period. For basketball the club in 1956 were founding members of the Liga Española de Balanchesto and finished as finalists. In 1959, they won the section's first ever double, winning the ACB Championship and Copa. The section also won a Catalan Championship in 1955. For handball the section continued its momentum by winning one Spanish Championship and four Catalan Championships. And finally roller hockey, which won two Copa del Rey and two Catalonia Championships. For Barca's reserve team, she played in the local regional leagues but, in 1950, the team was promoted to Tercera Division, reaching the Segunda Division two years later. In 1953, the club finished second in the league and promotion playoffs, but, being a Barcelona sub-club, they were unable to advance one division. After winning another promotion playoff in 1956, Espana Industrial became independent from FC Barcelona and was renamed Club Deportivo Condal. The club wore blue shirts with two white diagonal stripes. Condal once competed in La Liga, in the 1956-57 season, being relegated as 16th and final. In 1954, it was another club legend who signed Luis Suarez to Barca as one of the best Spanish football players, a key piece of Catalan success and the only Spanish to have won the Golden Ball. Ramon Villaverde the good South American also entered the club under the orders of the new coach Sandro Pupo replaced after a year by the return of Franz Platko who after a bad season will also be sacked for Domenic Balmania in his place. This season will be marked by the entry into the club of one of Barca's top scorers, Eulogio Martinez, and Ferran Olivella, a bigger captain with 524 games on the clock for the club. As said before, the stadium had to be enlarged to meet the demand of the crowd which was becoming too high in the old stadium. Construction work on the current camp now therefore began in 1955 and was completed two years later. Late. The land was inaugurated under the presidency of Francesc Miro Sons, on September 24, 1957, the day of La Merce, patron saint of Barcelona. Various celebratory acts took place during the inauguration ceremony, which included a match against a selection of players from Warsaw. Barca enjoyed their first victory in the stadium, 4-2. Paraguayan striker Eulogio Martinez scored the first goal. The stadium had an initial capacity of 99,053 spectators. The total cost of Camp Nou was almost 300 million pesetas. Today Camp Nou is the stadium with the largest capacity in Europe, accommodating 99,354 spectators. After this major event, Barca won two Fairs Cup, two Liga and two Copa del Rey to mark its domination in this decade. These successes have been achieved with players like Evaristo de Macedo exceptional scorer, Sandor Cox is called Golden Head because of his incredible abilities in the air, goalkeeper Salvador Saderni and Josep Maria Fuste with incredible speed. Under the orders of Helenio Herrera who is called the magician and who left an indelible mark on Barca. After his dismissal for poor results in the European Cup, it was his assistant Enrich Rabassa who finished the season with the club before being replaced in 1960 by Lubi Sobrocic for a few months also because of a bad start in La Liga. During the 1960s, FC Barcelona experienced a constant increase in the number of its members. Paradoxically, this does not go hand in hand with sporting success. At the same time, Catalonia has welcomed a large number of migrants and it is in this context that Barca has become an important mechanism of integration into Catalan society. Irregular sporting success and economic austerity, in part due to the construction of Camp Nou, prevented the club from recruiting great players, this was reflected in Barca's results. It is first of all in change at the level of the presidency in 1961 which will be carried out with the arrival of Antony Julia de Capmany for one year only with the presidency due to bad decisions. The manager will also change with the arrival of Enrique Orizala for only five months before Luis Miro is appointed manager. 
he too will be dismissed for a bad result, which will always bring in 1961 the appointment of Enrich Clodet as president involving on the bench the nomination of the legend Ladislao Kubala. Under these orders, Barca won the 1963 Copa del Rey against Zaragoza with the help of Jesus Maria Perida and these extraordinary technical capacities but also of Julio César Benetez one of the most classy defenders of the club also of defender Eladio Silvestre and Joaquim Rife who will have 562 matches with the club. Regarding the sections, roller hockey will enter a crisis that will last up to seven years due to a reduction in the budget that the club allocates to the sections despite the cup victory in 1963 and the arrival of legend Jordi Villacorta in 1969. For basketball, this period saw the team decline. In 1961, the team was disbanded despite its popularity. However, in 1962 the club was reformed after a fan campaign. In 1964, the league's Primera Division grew from 14 teams to 8 and the club ended up in the Segunda Division after failing to finish between the first two teams to qualify in the relegation qualifiers. However, they quickly returned to the Premier League after being crowned Segunda champions in 1965. For handball, the team achieved the Asobel Cup and Championship double in 1969. For rugby in 1966, the section won the Generalissimo Cup, led by international player Rockabere and club legend Ramon Ravassa as coach. As for the reserve team, in 1968 the club joined the Barcelona family as a reserve team and officially adopted the Blaugrana colours. In 1963, Kubala was fired and replaced by Josep Gonzalvo to finish the championship. The following season the coach will be replaced by Cesar Rodriguez who will resign at the start of the 1965 season because of these results. Despite the arrival of the emblematic figure Gallego and defender Anthony Torres. The team will therefore be trained by Vicent Sassot, involved in the youth teams of Barca for 14 years due to poor results he will then become the assistant of Roque Olsen in 1966. This season Barca won the Fairs Cup, the club organised the first friendly tournament at the Camp Nou Stadium which is named in honour of Joan Gamper, a founding member, player and later club president. The competition was inaugurated in 1966 by Enrich Clodet, one of Gamper's successes as club president. The following year Narcos de Carreras would become president after running for a united front. That day, he declared that, Barca is more than a club, the current motto of the Carlin club during his acceptance speech. The same year it was the city's son who entered the Carl's Rexic club. Salvador Artigas had become the coach of Barca in 1968 where he won the Copa del Rey against Real Madrid. This match went down in history as the final of the bottle. The name was born out of an incident that occurred minutes before the end of the match, when spectators threw glass bottles at Barca players. In 1969, Josep Seguer was to become interim coach until the arrival of Vic Buckingham on the bench, a club chaired by Agustí Montalai Costa following the resignation of his predecessor. The following year the club won the Copa del Rey with the iconic midfielder Juan Manuel Asensi. President Agustí Montalai Costa insisted on the involvement of members and was committed to the idea that all members would see their views reflected through their votes. In 1973, Montal was re-elected president when only member representatives could vote. During his presidency, Montal avidly defended the restoration of Catalanism and strongly opposed centralism in football, as exercised by the Spanish Football Federation and the National Sports Delegation. Its influence led football club Barcelona to start recovering its symbols, starting with the name of the organization which had been changed to sound more Spanish after the Civil War. For the start of this period, Marinus Mikkels who had won everything with Ajax becomes the club's coach. Barca win the Fairs Cup against Leeds 3-1. In 1973, a legend in the club's history signed for Barca, Johan Cruyff, one of the best players of all time. His immense quality has earned him worldwide recognition and he has won the Golden Ball three times. Miguelli, one of the club's most capped players, also made his debut this year. With Cruyff, the team won La Liga 1974 with a 5-0 success at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. The following season it was the Dutchman Johan Nieskens who signed to team up with former colleague Johan Cruyff. The club's 75th anniversary was a major event due to the large number of club supporters and a euphoric sporting atmosphere following the team's victory in the league. The commemorative acts were used to celebrate all that Barca meant and involved the participation of personalities representing the most dynamic aspects of Catalan society. Joan Miro, Salvador Dali, Anthony Tapies, Joan Fuster, Perry Calders and Tiersna have all contributed to an artistic or literary work. For the 75th anniversary, Josep M. Espinas and John Pikas wrote the lyrics of a song, for which Manuel Valls composed the music. It has become the official club anthem, the Cant del Bar. <laughs>
During this decade, FC Barcelona has implemented a policy for the club to strengthen its Catalan identity, despite the limits imposed by the Franco dictatorship. In 1972, the Catalan language was again broadcast over the Camp Nou loudspeakers. In 1973, the club restored its original name, Football Club Barcelona. In 1975, Catalan regained its place as the official language of the club. That same year, FC Barcelona joined the Congress of Catalan Culture. The 1975-76 season coincided with political upheavals within the Franco regime. On December 28, 1975, a Barca Real Madrid match took place, in which a massive display of seniors was to be seen for the first time at Camp Nou. The spectators had smuggled the flags. It was only a month since Franco's death. The match was broadcast on television, meaning the sight of thousands of seniors waving all over the stadium had a huge impact. Barca won the game, with a Rexit goal in the last minute, which made the triumph all the more resounding. FC Barcelona's commitment to Catalan identity was clearly expressed on April 13, 1977 when the Assembly of Representatives called for a statute of autonomy for Catalonia. This decade marked a great start in the successes of the various sections of the club. In 1972-73, the club was run by Dalmatio Morna with Francisco Gallardo as an assistant, someone who had been linked to the club his entire life. These two men, along with Francisco Baltazar, were the men who would run the club through both triumph and unrest. One of the major problems that the club regularly faces is the lack of a permanent playing field. The president of Barca had therefore announced that a new pitch was in preparation, but the construction of the Palau de Gel and the Palau Blaugrana forced the rugby team to move. Once the team was able to return to their homeland, they finished at the top of the table in 1972-73 and won the Copa Iberia in 1971. For handball the first successes came after the construction of the Palau Blaugrana in 1971 although in the 1970s, where Granolas, Calpiza and Atletico de Madrid dominated, only two Copa del Rey and two Asobel League and one were achieved. This decade will also have been marked by Joan Sagales, legend of the club, his number 14 will be retired in the future. Concerning basketball, the team acquired one league and four Copa ACB as well as one Catalan league with these future legends number 7 Nacho Solizabal and number 15 Juan Antonio San Epifanio who arrived in 1979. Both will have their numbers withdrawn in the future for their exploits. For roller hockey, Josep Lorente, former Barca player, takes over the technical direction of FC Barcelona. With Lorente at the helm of the Barcelona bench, a deep makeover of the squad was carried out which quickly got the desired results. The best period of the section was born with six League One, six European League, five Copa del Rey, one Continental Cup and two Montreux Cup. An extraordinary decade, unheard of in the discipline. The legends who have strongly contributed to the titles are Quim Pauls, Jordi Vila Puig, Carls Trulles and their coaches Josep Lorente. In 1971 the Palau Blaugrana was built, the stadium originally accommodated 5,696 spectators and was used for handball, basketball and roller hockey matches. The same year in October 1971 the Palau de Gel was inaugurated with a capacity of 1,256 places to house its new section of ice hockey which won two Spanish Kings Cups in the decade. For the reserve team of FC Barcelona in 1970, Barcelona president Agustí Montal decided to merge Condal with another junior club, Athletic Catalunya, and formed Barcelona Athletic. Under the new denomination, Team B played a total of 10 seasons at the second tier. In 1976, Laureano Ruiz became the team's coach for a short period before being replaced the same year by Marinus Mikkels for his second term. One year later Ryman Carrasco I. Azamar will become interim president. He will be replaced by Josep Luis Núñez who will remain at the head of the Catalan club for 22 years. The president places Lucien Muller on the bench and recruits Hans Krankel one of the club's top scorer and adored by the fans as well as winger Francisco José Carrasco. The club won the Copa del Rey in 1978 and the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1979 against Dusseldorf with new coach Joachim Riffey. It was in this period that the futsal section of Barca was born. The first stage of FC Barcelona futsal was to play in regional tournaments in Catalonia, where they made good progress and won the regional title in 1980. In 1979 La Mesa is used for the first time by the club to host its young footballers from outside Barcelona. The idea for the Youth Academy was brought to Núñez by Jorm Amat, and Oriol Tort was in charge of the installation. In 1980, Heleno Herrera replaces the current coach, he will also be replaced by the legend Ladislao Kubala who will remain on the Catalan bench five months before the third mandator of Heleno Herrera at the head of the Blaugrana team. 
this year is marked by the arrival of star Jose Ramon Alexanko, Quinny and exceptional German midfielder Bernd Schuster. During the 1980s, FC Barcelona experienced an alternation of ups and downs, influenced by match results, star player performances and other issues unrelated to sport. The beginning of the decade was marked by the kidnapping of striker Quinny, which lasted 25 days. Regarding the sections of the club, although Futsal Barca became champions in the first two seasons of the regional division, the board agreed to dissolve the club in 1982-83. The club did not regain its official futsal status until 1986, when it started participating in tournaments at the national level. FC Barcelona was one of the leaders of the sport at the end of the decade, since in the 1987-88 season they reached the final of the Copa de España and in 1988-89 the team was proclaimed winner of the tournament. In 1990, the Catalan club won the European Cup over Italian champions as Roma Futsal. Although at the time it was an unofficial tournament. In 1980-1981, Barca again accepted the National Cup final, but lost 7-5 to Bilbao, who in turn also won the league championship ahead of FC Barcelona. For ice hockey, the club to win the Spanish Kings Cup in 1982, after this victory, the Barca club announced their decision to dissolve the senior section of the section to focus their work on developing hockey teams in the lower categories. With their youth team, the club won two league championships. For roller hockey, the team continues its momentum by winning three league, four European league, three Copa del Rey, five Continental Cup and one European Cup Winners' Cup. With these legends Joan Torner and Josep Enrich Torner. Unfortunately that streak of good results was interrupted in 1987, largely due to the lack of generational replacement of the team's most decisive players. Faced with this situation, at the end of the 1987-88 season, Josep Lorente left the technical management of the team. The results are very positive, 39 titles in 17 years. That year, the title drought for FC Barcelona roller hockey began. For basketball, in 1980 the club president, Josep Luis Núñez, gave his full support to the team with the aim of making the club the best in Spain and Europe. His support has produced results and over the decade, inspired by their coach Etu Garcia Renesis and players like Juan Antonio San Epifanio, Andres Jiménez, Sibilio, Ordi Norris and Solizabal, the club have won five Spanish championships, five Spanish cups, two European Cup winners' cups, one Spanish Super Cup, six Catalan championship, one Prince of Asturias Cup, one European Super Cup, one Karak Cup and the World Championship. However the European Cup remained elusive, ending as a finalist in 1984. For the handball section, the 80s were crowned with six Liga Asobel, one Champions League, five Copa del Rey, four Spanish Super Cup, league titles and a Copa del Rey, three European Cup, Winners' Cup and seven Catalan Leagues coinciding with the arrival of Valero Rivera to the technical direction of the team in 1984, when an exceptional period began and rich in titles. These successes are in part due to legends like Xavier O'Callaghan, Enrich Massip, Anarchy Erdangren, David Barufet. Regarding rugby, in 1983 they won the Copa del Rey de Rugby and the Spanish Supercopa, as well as another Copa del Rey in 1985. For football, the German Udo Latsky became the team's coach in 1981, the club recruited the unforgettable goalkeeper Javier Gonzalez Uritacochia, this year the club won European Cup Winners' Cup against Standard de Liege. The following year it was Diego Armando Maradona who signed for Barca, considered the best player in the world in the 80s and one of the greatest of all time. The legend helped him win a Copa del Rey and a Spanish League Cup. Regarding Barca's structures, the construction of its own grassroots football facilities was one of the first projects undertaken by President Josep Luis Núñez. The mini estadio was inaugurated on September 23, 1982. On the day of its inauguration, a friendly football match was played by two teams from the FC Barcelona first team. This stadium will be used to host the matches of the B and C team of FC Barcelona as well as the juvenile A team and the women's team later. The following year, following the dismissal of the coach, José Luis Romero was to coach the team for a match before being replaced by César Luis Menotti, the team won only one Spanish Super Cup so the coach resigned. So it was Terry Venables who took the head of the team in 1984, Barca won La Liga due to the stop of Aruti against Valladolid on penalty and another Spanish League Cup. The following year, Andoni Zubazareta, the great goalkeeper, signed for the club. This period was also that of the inauguration of the FC Barcelona Museum. In 1988, the club's women's team was created by the president. At this time Luis Aragonés becomes the coach of the Barca team where he will be replaced the following season after a victory in the Copa del Rey. Replaced by Carls Rexic for a few games. 
This year the club recruited tireless midfielder Jose Mari Vaquero, Guillermo Aimer who will play 587 games with the club and Texikiki members of the legendary Dream Team. Carl's Rexic was replaced and will become the assistant of the legendary Johan Cruyff on the Catalan bench. To end this decade, Barca won in style the 1989 edition of the European Cup Winners' Cup, notably with the legendary Michael Laudrup and the great defender Ronald Koeman. A year later Barca won La Liga and Catalan Cup with the help of young pivot Josep Guardiola and best Bulgarian Risto Stoichkov. In 1990, the basketball section will play these matches in Palau Sant Jordi for two years. With Cruyff as manager, Barca are once again associated with excellent football and sporting success. The board chaired by Josep Luis Núñez focused on building a football team that would generate enthusiasm and good performance. Camp now has started to fill up again. The period begins with the departure of Magueli, the second player to wear Barca's shirt most often, only beaten by Xavi Hernández. The decade began with four consecutive victorious years in La Liga from 1991 to 1994. The last three were won in the last match of the season. For some match it is Karls Rexic the assistant who will be on the bench because of Cruyff's heart problem. In 1992, FC Barcelona won their first Champions League, at Wembley Stadium in London, when Barca beat Sampdoria in Genoa. The course of FC Barcelona's history has changed forever. The game continued after a goalless draw. In the 111th minute, Ronald Koeman's brilliant free kick won Barca's first European Cup victory. 25,000 supporters accompanied the team to Wembley. A million people have come to the streets of Barcelona to welcome the European champions to their homes. The following year the club won the European Super Cup against Werder Bremen. The same year the superb striker Romario da Souza signed to the club as well as left-back Sergi Barjuan. In 1995, it was the great Portuguese player Figo who signed for the club. During this decade, Barca also won two Copa del Rey, four Spanish Super Cup, two Catalan Cup and one Copa Generalitat. For the sections, handball dominated in Europe, with two consecutive recoppers in the mid-90s. But the best of the team would be seen between 1996 and 2000, when Valero Rivera's team won five European Cups. Consecutively, a milestone that no other team has ever reached. This overwhelming domination was complemented by four consecutive European Super Cups. At the national level, the club to also dominate without dispute by winning six Asobel League, four Copa del Rey, four Asobel Cup, six Spanish Super Cup, four Catalonia Super Cup and five Catalan League. For rugby they spent much of the 1990s and early 2000s languishing in the lower echelons. Regarding the basketball section, the club built on this success during the 1990s, the club playing these matches at the Palau Blaugrana and winning five other Spanish championships and two Catalan Cups and one Carac Cup. They still haven't been able to win the European Cup despite having played four other finals in 1990, 1991, 1996 and 1997. They also made a record six appearances in the Euroleague final. The star players of that time were Juan Antonio San Epifanio, Juan Carlos Navarro and Roberto Duinas. In 1997, the reserve team of the section was created. For roller hockey, still lacking the title until the 1994 season, when Barca won the Copa del Rey. A year later, José Luis Paws and Roberto Roldán arrived at the Barca club. At the end of the season, Carlos Figueroa as coach and players Ramón Benito, Gabi Cairo, David Gabaldon, José Luis Paws, Alberto Barregón and Carlos Folguera completed the squad, becoming the top favourites of all competitions. Dot. In this way, Barca lived up to expectations and won five league, three European league, one other Copa del Rey, four Catalan league, two Continental Cup, one Intercontinental Cup, two Iberian Cup and one Montreux Nations Cup. During the 1998-1999 season, year of the centenary of the Barca club, all the teams of the professional sections won their respective leagues. For ice hockey, after two seasons without a high-level championship, the federation decided to resume competition with the team that achieved a brace by winning the Spanish League Championships and the Spanish Kings Cup in 1997. In 1994, the women's volleyball section was created by the club. For the futsal section, FC Barcelona were one of the first participants in the Liga Nacional Football Sala where the club will remain one of the main clubs until the introduction of the regular season in 1995-96. FC Barcelona reduced the budget section of futsal and the team had to be formed only of local players. Barca came down to the second division in 1997-98. Finally, Barca were promoted in the 1999-2000 season, finishing second in the regular season and winning the playoffs for promotion. 
For women's football, the team won the Copa de la Reina in 1994 and being the championship finalist in 1992 and 1994, before a decline. In 2000, the reserve team of the section was created. In 1990, the men's reserve team was renamed Barcelona B. This period also noted the modification of the Joan Gamper Trophy by a single match and no longer a mini-tournament in 1997. The same year the Barca TV channel was created. In 1996, FC Barcelona recruited Luis Enrique and the phenomenon one of the best players of his time Ronaldo. This year the club won the European Cup Winners' Cup against Paris with a penalty from Ronaldo with Bobby Robson as coach, after the resignation of Cruyff. The following season is marked by the arrival of the future Golden Ball Rivaldo to replace Ronaldo, the team won the European Super Cup and La Liga with striker Patrick Kluivert and Louis van Gaal as new coach who will also win La Liga the following season. The Dutch coach also made the young and future club legends Carls Puyol and Xavi Hernandez debut. In 2000, Joan Gaspart I Solves the former deputy director became the president of Barca, he appointed Lorenc Serra Ferrer as coach of the first team. The club celebrate 100 years and wanted the celebrations of the centenary of FC Barcelona to continue for one year. Fans and athletes attended a series of commemorative events between November 28, 1998 and November 29, 1999. It all started with a big party in the stadium. One of the most memorable moments is when the legendary Catalan singer Joan Manuel Serrat sang the Barca anthem in front of 100,000 spectators. Another moment of emotion occurred on April 28, 1999 with the parade of hundreds of athletes who have defended the colours of FC Barcelona over the years. Few organisations reach their 100th anniversary, as this requires consistency and continuity. The goal of FC Barcelona's centenary was to celebrate the link between a glorious past and new hope for the future. In 2001, it was Carls Rexic who would return to the club for the first time because of an inglorious result despite the fact that the coach started for the first time the legends Victor Valdez and the young Iniesta who was one of the players. Most loved and emblematic of Barca supporters. The manager will be replaced by Jesus Antonio de la Cruz in 2003 as an interim for a single match. It was Radomir Antic who took the lead of the Catalan bench. In 2003, Enrich Reina became interim president after the resignation of his predecessor then after the collective resignation of the board of directors, an interim management committee took over the club before the arrival of Joan Laporta to the club's pre-presidency. This year is marked by the recruitment of Ronaldinho, one of the best players of all time. Who will even be applauded in a match at the Santiago Bernabeu against the rival after a perfect match. Laporto also decided to part ways with Antic and recruit Dutchman Frank Rijkaard. This season Barca won only one Catalan Cup. For the sections of the club, at the top of hockey, Gabi Cairo gave up roller hockey followed by Carlos Figueroa. His replacement on the bench was Quim Pauls, a former player and until then still linked to the section. With him, the team continued to subscribe to the victories. The team achieved an exceptional decade by winning nine league, six European league, five Copa del Rey, four Spanish Super Cup, eight Continental Cup, two Intercontinental Cup, one CERS Cup and one Iberian Cup. For the handball section, during the 2003-2004 season, Valero Rivera left the technical direction of the Barca team, with one of the myths of Barcelona handball, Enrich Massif. With them, Anarchy Erdangreen, Rafael Guijosa, Ortega, Andre Zepkin and Xavier O'Callaghan, among others, the handball dream team, a dream team and irreplaceable, was over. But the successes continued. Led by dream team survivor captain David Barufet and with players such as Laszlo Nagy, Dragon Skerbik or Ica Romero. In 2009, Xavi Pascal took over as FC Barcelona coach and a period of sporting success began. The section obtained during this decade, three Asobel League, two Champions League, four Copa del Rey, two Asobel Cup, four Spanish Super Cup, seven Pyrenees League, one EHF Cup and one European Super Cup. For rugby, they were promoted to the next level in 2006, after signing an agreement to replace the downsizing USAP Barcelona, but were relegated two years later. For basketball, their persistence finally paid off and in 2003, inspired by Dejan Bodroga, Gregor Fucca, Sarunas Jasakevicius and Juan Carlos Navarro, they won the Euroleague. They repeated the feat in 2010, beating Olympiacos, they made history by beating the reigning two-time NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers, including Kobe Bryant and former FCB basket Pau Gasol. The section has also won four ACB League, five Copa ACB, three Spanish Supercopa and three Catalan League. 
For ice hockey, the team won Spanish League championships in 2002 and 2009. Regarding futsal, the Catalans were at the bottom of the table in the honorary division then will be relegated. In 2006 under the leadership of Marc Carmona, the club was promoted to the first division and then Joan Laporta, increased investment in the futsal part of the club, notably by recruiting Javi Rodriguez. In the 2010-11 season, FC Barcelona made history by winning their first official futsal title, the Copa de España and the first Copa del Rey in the same year. For women's football, in 2001 the section was incorporated into FC Barcelona as an official section while the Spanish league was refounded into Superliga Femenina, the team was promoted in 2004. The section won the Copa de la Reina in 2011 and two Catalan Cups in the same period. Regarding women's volleyball, after an agreement reached in 2004, the club was absorbed by FC Barcelona, officially becoming its volleyball department. In 2001, Barca formalized the creation of UNS FC Barcelona, wheelchair basketball in collaboration with the Fundacho Institute Gutman. In 2008, it is also the creation of the section of rugby with 13 which unfortunately will disappear in 2010 with all the same a Catalan Cup obtained in 2008. Regarding the formation of the club, the president of the club Joan Laporta changed the name to Barcelona Athletic in 2008. Two years later, his successor Sandro Rosal returned to the previous denomination. Former club player Luis Enrique took over from Pep Guardiola as team manager in the summer of 2008, the latter having been appointed the team's head coach. 2010, Barca B returned to Division 2 after an 11-year absence, but the team was not eligible for promotion. In 2002, Barca magazine was also created, it will be released every two months evoking the club's news. In 2006 the Ciutat Esportiva Joan Gampa was inaugurated, which is the training ground and the academic base of the club. It was named in honor of Joan Gampa, founder of the club. This base replaces the old major which received more publicity after the success of Barcelona B with local players, the recent fame and success of La Major as a talented school, which has featured prominent members such as Cesc Fabregas, Lionel Messi, Gerard Piquet and Pedro. In 2000, Louis van Gaal, Barcelona first team coach, was widely ridiculed by the city's sports media for his dream of winning the Champions League with 11 local players. Yet the club will be the first team to win the trophy in 2009 with eight local players. From 1979 to 2009, 440 young people left their homes and families to stay at the academy. In 2004, the club will buy the intelligent Deco and the indomitable lion Samuel Ato. But this year will be marked forever by the first matches of the future best player of all time Lionel Messi in 2004, prolific scorer and creative playmaker, the player will reign in world football for his entire career. This season Barca won the Catalan Cup and La Liga like the following season by adding a Spanish Super Cup and the club's second Champions League by beating Arsenal. In 2006, a historic agreement was signed with UNICEF, by virtue of which the club undertook to collaborate financially with this association, whose anagram now bears the jersey of the club's first team. This year the club won only the Spanish Super Cup and a Catalan Cup. In 2007 it was the courageous Eric Abadal who arrived at the club, the following year it was the indefatigable Daniel Alves who signed for the club from Seville but also the members of the club's training centre who acceded to the club. First team to become legends, Pedro, Sergio Busquets and Gerard Piquet. In 2008, Josep Guardiola accepted the difficult task of replacing Frank Rijkaard as coach and ended a two-season run without a major trophy. To do this, he applied the same style of play as when he was a club player, an offensive philosophy based on passing and it turned out to be a great success. In his debut season, Guardiola won all three available trophies, La Liga, Copa del Rey and the club's third Champions League against Manchester United with several players absent in defence. The Premier League team started strong but Eto'o's goal changed the game and from there Barca dominated with Messi heading a goal to bring the final score 2-0. With this success Barca became the first Spanish team to win the Copa del Rey treble, the Championship and the Champions League. After a successful start, the following season in 2009-2010, Barca became the team of the six trophies, all won in the calendar year 2009. The FIFA Club World Cup, the European Super Cup, the Supercopa de Spain at the end of the year. The club have also won La Liga. The streak of success continued with Guardiola winning 14 out of 19 possible titles as a coach in his four seasons in charge.
Guardiola has become a benchmark in football and his Barker team have gone beyond the strict soccer field. In 2010, legend David Villa signed to the club to assist the attack as well as Javier Mascherano for the defence bought by new president Sandro Rosal. FC Barcelona made history with the nomination of Xavi, Iniesta and Messi as finalists for the 2010 FIFA Ballon d'Or. Three homegrown superstars, instilled in the values of effort, humility, sportsmanship and enthusiasm, were selected as the three best players in the world in 2010. The 2010-2011 season will be marked by the victory in La Liga, in the Spanish Super Cup and the landslide victory in the Champions League at Wembley against Manchester United. It was a beautiful display of football, one of the best ever in the Champions League final. Europe hailed Barker and the world press followed suit. The team also made history by humiliating Real Madrid 5-0 at Camp Nou with an incredible style of play. This team has been the culmination of everything FC Barcelona represents. Barca have broken all kinds of records, played memorable games and won just about every title on offer. Guided by the king of football Messi and these two friends Iniesta and Xavi. But it wasn't just the football team that took the top honours. The section's basketball teams were at the top of Spanish basketball, appearing in almost every league and cup finals against rivals Real Madrid. Barca won two league, three Copa ACB, one Spanish Super Cup and seven Catalan League. In 2020 the now Palau Barcelona will be created, the multi-sport arena will host the matches of the basketball, handball and futsal teams. The latter with his first league title, Futsal Barca could participate in the UEFA Cup for the first time in the 2011-2012 season. They progressed to the final and won it. This decade will be the best of the section where the team also won three Liga, five Copa del Rey, two Spanish Super Cup, three Copa de España and another UEFA Cup in 2014 in 2011. The section of FC Barcelona Beach Soccer was created by the club, in 2015 the section won the Club World Cup. For roller hockey, Pujalta stopped coaching at the end of the 2011 season, and legend Gabi Cairo was appointed coach, replaced after great success by Ricard Munoz who in four and a half seasons of which he was the coach, the team won 13 titles. In June 2017, Edu Castro was appointed coach who has also won numerous titles. During this decade, the roller hockey section has won eight league, three European league, five Copa del Rey, six Spanish Super Cup, two Catalan league, two Continental Cup and two Intercontinental Cup. For handball, in 2013 the Catalans won the Super Globe title and completed the full list of handball world records. The following year for the first time in history the section ended the Asobal League by winning all matches 30 wins in 30 matches and they set the league's historic goal record 1146. In 2014, Barca is once again world club champion. In this decade and with a formidable team filled with stars, Barca to win the Nina Sobel League consecutively, won Champions League, six Copa del Rey, Nina Sobel Cup consecutively, nine Spanish Super Cup also consecutively, eight Catalonia Super Cups and three other Super Globes at the end of the decade, never seen in history regarding rugby, the team played in the second tier Division de Honor B for five seasons before being promoted to the first tier Division de Honor in 2014. In 2018, Barcelona won the first ever Catalonia Supercopa, beating Sant Boiana 21-17. The Hoxie section on ice won two Spanish Kings Cups in 2015 and 2019. During this period, the women's football team won five Women's League, four Copa de la Reina, eight Catalan Cup and a Spanish Supercup in 2020. This decade, women's football has marked the sections of the club by its domination at the level national and regional. For women's volleyball, after years playing outside of the Premier League, the club were promoted to the Spanish Superliga in 2011-12. A third place in 2013-2014 allowed the team to participate for the first time in a European competition. Regarding training, on June 30, 2011, the major building ceased to house the players of the academy. In a simple ceremony, the doors were closed and the Ciutat Esportiva Joan Gamper took over the function of residential centre for the players. Moreover the football club continued to march on these opponents with its players trained at the club. In 2011, the club won the FIFA Club World Cup against Maymar and his club Santos but also a Copa del Rey and a Spanish Super Cup. The following year it is Guardiola who announces his resignation with him, Barca has not only triumphed, he has collected records and trophies like others collect stamps. In those four years they have broken more than 40 national, European and world football records. He will be replaced by Tito Villanova, his assistant recognized for his record season in La Liga. This season the club won La Liga and a Catalan Cup. Unfortunately, a serious illness prevented him from continuing on the team bench the following season. Tito will die after a long battle with illness in 2014. 
The coach was replaced by Gerardo, Tata, Martino but this year will be marked by the transfer of the Brazilian star Neymar from Santos. The coach will be fired because of having only the Spanish Super Cup. At the end of the season, two symbols left Barca, Carlos Puyol, the eternal captain, announced his retirement as a player after 593 official games and a career that made him an idol for Barca fans. The departure coincided with that of Victor Valdez, Barca's longtime goalkeeper. The following season was a renewal for the team with the arrival of striker Luis Suarez, and former player Luis Enrique on the team bench. Success immediately followed in their debut season as Barca won La Liga, Copa del Rey, Catalan Supercopa and the club's fifth Champions League against Juventus with a terrific match from MSN Messi, Suarez and Neymar. The end of the season coinciding with the completion of the second hat-trick, Xavi Hernandez announced his farewell. The legendary FC Barcelona midfielder has hung up his shoes after 17 seasons with the first team. He said goodbye to the club with an enviable total of 25 titles. He left a legacy of his unique style of football. In 2015, Josep Maria Bartomeu won the election to the presidency of FC Barcelona after the resignation of Sandro Rosal. This season Barca won the Club World Cup, the European Super Cup, La Liga, the Copa del Rey. A year later, Barca won the Copa del Rey and the Spanish Super Cup again despite a defeat in the Champions League. The club had achieved a feat in the round of 16 by beating 6-1 Paris, who won the first leg 4-0. This success in party because of Neymar had not been sufficiently thanked and the Brazilian to leave the club for Paris the following season for €222 million. Euros. This season marked by the arrival of Ernesto Valverde on the bench, who won two consecutive Liga, a Spanish Super Cup and a Catalan Super Cup before his dismissal for his style of play and these results in the Champions League. Kik Setien took over the team at mid-season, the coach because of a waking team that relied too much on Messi to fail on all fronts achieving the club's first white season in a decade. A humiliating 8-2 loss to Bayern Munich in the quarter-finals saw him sacked from the Catalan club. After that it was Ronald Koeman who was appointed as the team's coach, however when the documentary was created on the club it was unfortunately the legend of the Messi club who considered leaving FC Barcelona. To be continued.